Are you ready to begin, Acting City Manager? Yes, we are, Mayor. Thank you. Acting City Clerk, are we ready? Yes, I will record now. February 1st, 2022, regular meeting of the Mill Creek City Council to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would Council Member Duque lead us tonight? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Holtzclaw. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Vigno. Here. Council Member Bond. Council Member Cavallari. Uh, Council Member Steckler. Council Member Allison. Council Member Duque. By the mayor pro tem this afternoon that he has an appointment right before the meeting and will be here as soon as he is finished. So I don't think we need a motion to excuse. And mayor pro tem, can you hear us okay? I hear you mayor, but I did not hear the other council members when they were saying that they were here. Run through and do a mic check to make sure she can hear everyone. We need to make sure she can There's hear. There's the delay happening again, just the FYI. Oh, there's, uh, Stephanie, there may be a little bit of a delay. Okay, I'll I'll let you know if I can't hear people talking. Okay, yeah, raise your hand or start jumping up and down to let us know one way or the other. Okay, with that, we are gonna move on to audience communication with a bit of a twist tonight. Our governance manual calls for having audience communication at the beginning and the end of the meeting, but it also allows me the ability to provide for additional comment during study sessions to have a little more interactive dialogue with the public. So what we're gonna to do tonight is if at the initial audience communication, if you'd like to address the fire contract annexation or the fire annexation, we're gonna ask, uh, we're gonna provide a public comment on that topic during the study session here in our agenda. So if you'd like to speak to the council at the outset of the meeting, uh, you can speak to anything that's on the agenda, not on the agenda with the caveat, if you wanna speak about the fire annexation, please hold off to the study session. So you get three bites at the apple tonight. So with that introduction, would anyone like to address the council on anything other than the fire annexation? Ms. Heidel, I see you waving your hand. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't see the thing for the hand down below tonight. <clears throat> Once again, I am so glad that there were this, we had the coffee chat, that we're back to doing that. I do wish more people would join in, but I totally appreciate what the mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, are doing by hosting this. I also appreciate having Council Member Duque uh, join us too. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for people to speak and get responses right then to actually communicate with council members. So thank you so much. Last night, uh, anyone else like to address the council? It looks like I have everyone that I can see on the screen and I'm not seeing anyone else's, Mr. Nelson's screen is blank. Okay, so with that, we will, um, Move on to the study session on the fire annexation and the proposed agreements. Director Todd. Yep, go on here. Let's see. Share screen. Hold on. Let's hold on a second. We got some people booted out of the meeting. Oh, okay. I'm out here with council members, Duque and Allison somehow got knocked off the call. So, uh, so we're gonna get them back on before we continue.
audio is connected, why don't you test your audio to make sure we're So checking. Floor has not hit. Connie, mic check. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. We're back. A little technical issue there. So once again, we are back to talk about consideration of the resolutions and agreement for our, our potential annexation of the Snohomish County fire. So the agenda for tonight, find a button that goes forward. There we go. A couple of things. We're going to start off with staff presentations. The mayor said earlier, we'll give the public a chance to ask questions or make statements after we've done that. We thought it made more sense for that to do, to have that after we had the presentation. So that's an opportunity here from the public. That we, you're, what you're tonight doing is checking the final drafts of the resolutions to be considered on next week. And those are going to cover accepting the RFA plan, the pre-annexation and the short-term agreement and the commitment you're gonna make, potentially make to uh, reduce our, our uh, property tax levy through your budget plan. Um, we'll also, if the annexation doesn't pass, we started that conversation last week about what you would do. I'm gonna recap that one and look for new direction on that if you have any. And then at the very end, before we forget, this is our tonight, we will make an open call for people to volunteer to be on our pro and con committees. And the mayor will be saying that at the end of the meeting. Um, with that, some of this, got, a lot of this is recap. You've heard it before, but we want to make sure we had a complete presentation so the public who is listening now or listening in later wouldn't understand what's going on. So the current contract which the old District 7 expires at the end of this year. They cannot renew it without a substantial cost increase. We talked about that before. City reached out to other providers. We looked for other places to do contracts. We looked at doing our own department and those were all much more expensive. And we're all concerned about the higher costs with that, which would reduce funds available for other city services like police, roads and parks, things that are all important to us. And so we're considering asking voters to annex into South County Fire. Or it turns out they're the most cost-effective provider for high quality emergency services. We wanna have the same level of services and so they are just right next door to us, to our west. They're a regional fire authority as opposed to a fire district. They're headquartered south of Everett in an unincorporated area. And they serve right now Lindwood and surrounding cities and unincorporated areas. They serve those cities through contracts that are expiring and also gonna be looking at annexation soon, but it's mostly unincorporated Snohomish County and Lindwood right now. Uh, and as I said, they serve areas both to the north and west of Mill Creek. Typically, most Snohomish County property owners would be paying close to $2 per thousand for assessed property value per, per, their, per, excuse me, per $1,000 of assessed property value for high quality fire and EMS services like we've been getting. South County Fire, we proved as the most cost effective provider, had equivalent of rate about $1.51. So that's a, the best way for us to go in terms of saving money for our taxpayers. Annexation will maintain the quality and level of emergency services that we expect. We did not want to take a step down on that. It, but it does require the support of voters. And so that will be the measure we will put out there. If you elect to, we put out on the ballot next opportunity. So here's the steps. Annexation requires, um, it, excuse me, annexation is a long-term approach. This is gonna get us out of the fire business. We won't be in the fire business other than uh, help, helping our citizens uh, be, participate in South County Fire, RFA. The staff from Mill Creek and South County Fire have collaborated on the various documents and agreements you're gonna to see tonight. You've seen most of those before. Rick, um, Grant Degginger ran through those on January 11th. Nothing has really changed since then, but this is our formal uh, consideration of those agreements. Uh, they're required for changing from being, the city being the, the uh, using Surfer as our fire and EMS service provider to South County Fire. Vote is needed in April so that it would be in place by August so that South County Fire can adjust their boundaries and be in place for the January 23rd, January 2023 implementation of collecting taxes and uh, getting the revenue stream they need to operate for us. So it's a long lead time because of this need to adjust boundaries as we talked about last week. If the annexation is not successful, we've negotiated a safety net short-term contract in case it doesn't go through we don't have an option to not provide fire and EMS. So we had to come up with something. So South County Fire has offered us a, a reasonable deal that is that represents their incremental costs 
uh, and makes it for us a way to bridge through to a full annexation in the next couple of years. The, uh, the agreements you're seeing tonight in your packet are in their final form. They happen to be considered at the same moment by South County Fire. They are going to adopt those tonight. They're done looking at them and it's handy for us that they're gonna adopt those unless there's some changes, but they anticipated adopting those tonight. So when we look at them next week to adopt them, we will be sure that there's not a moving target. And the RFA is required by statute to adopt a high level plan that addresses its boundaries, its governance, its funding, its staffing, and its services. And that plan that they already have in place as an RFA has to be amended to reflect any proposed annexation. So they've gone through that exercise that happened last December. They approved that, that amended plan and they presented it to us in, with terms and conditions that make sense for us. So we've talked about that. Uh, council's talked about that before. There's no surprises there, no, no changes. It is required by the statute that it be that it be approved in identical form, both places. So you have to have it exactly the same. That has already been adopted. It's in what's in your packet is their adopted RFA plan. And so we, to go forward, we have a resolution to adopt that exact same plan. We cannot hear anything right now. The Zoom feed is lost. Yeah, Laurels, do you hear this one better? We can hear you now. Thank she you. She nodded yes. Okay. You start at the beginning. Go ahead. Yeah, do I need to back up, Laurel? Is this good? <laughs> On the first. It was this slide. That it this slide. Oh, this slide did it. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, it amends the governing board. Um, board is they have five districts. They have two at large positions. Once they amend their plan if to include us, they will amend their districts. And so we eventually will be in their elections for districts. They have said to us, they don't know where the districts are be. That's a redistricting process. You can't predict those, but they suspect because of our size and our geography, we'll probably be in two districts. So somebody from who lives in Mill Creek would either be in one or those or in the other, those two districts could run for those offices. And there's also two at large positions. So that's what's referring to about amending their governing board. It just amends it so that we can participate. Until they do that redistricting, we have a non-voting seat. So it will take some time to do that, but I think that's something that happens fairly promptly thereafter. So that's the first agreement we need to do. Second agreement we talked about is a pre-annexation agreement. So if the vote is successful, how do we go towards annexation? There's some things you need to lay out in that process, the sequence of steps to get us into a position where we're annexed into the district. So it lays out more details, the timing in terms of that. And it only takes effect if the voters approve annexation. So if you read the details there, it says it's only if it annexed. So it's a conditional throughout. It provides fire and EMS services and funding arrangements after the annexation before the authority starts. So that weird period from August 1st of this year to the end of this year, we still have a contract with Surfer to provide the services what South County Fire and Surfer have talked about is what that transition would be, regardless of when they choose to make a transition, the amount of money that's, that the city has already budgeted for fire is guaranteed in this pre-annexation agreement to be enough money for South County to take that over. So it's up to the two agencies to make that transition happen, but no cost difference to us. And so it talks about that first funny short period, um, which would be pre-annexation period. It talks about the purchase and transfer of the station. We need to have the station. We would purchase it from Surfer, purchase the rest of it, the part we don't already own, and transfer transfer of that to South County Fire. Any contracts or records we have that's covered by that agreement, we pass those over. 
and the fire marshal and fire inspection services that we've talked about, they're in progress still. We're trying to model that after what Linwood's done. They've got some tweaking to do, but it's that same kind of number we've talked about, about a half an FTE, and we'll have a provision in there. So if that's not the right amount a year later, we'll be able to go back and adapt it. And we're convinced that that's the right approach. Annexation doesn't pass. What do we do? So there's an interim short, short term, what we call safety net service contract. And so it has the pricing and conditions for South County Fire to provide fire and EMS. And again, that short period in 2022, 2023, and 2024, if the annexation vote doesn't pass. It is conditional for 2024 that if we don't put it on the ballot in 2023, they could say this contract is null and void, start all over again. But it is so long as we, the city, continue to try to get annexation to be accomplished once per year, uh, we can move forward with that. Service beyond 2024 need a new agreement. They've already indicated that would be probably at a parity rate, um, but that has not been negotiated. It's not part of that short-term service contract. That was too hard to be to predict that far. And really, hopefully, we're going to be annexed at that point and be quit being the middleman. Uh, it presents. Overall, that's what guarantees that it preserves the current staffing level at, for five personnel 24 seven, just as we have now. It, during the, under the interim service contract, they agreed just to use station 76 as it is. We will just let them lease it for a dollar a year or something like that, and they use it that way. They will maintain it, they will take care of it. We don't have to make any capital improvements to it. It's just a way to keep this going. Uh, without them having to make an investment in future capital improvements they might want to have or us being stuck with that bill. And throughout this agreement, they realize that we don't have fire trucks. We don't have fire equipment in general. We have the opportunity to buy some of that from, from uh, Surfer, and we will certainly look at that. But if it's the kind of equipment that South County Fire says it's not compatible or it's too old, they will just provide their own. And they've got enough, enough equipment and have other equipment on order long term that they're going to be fine for in terms of trucks and, and uh, medic units, et cetera. The other resolution you'll pass will be not with respect to an agreement, but it will be a, a, a resolution that says what you're going to do with your budget in 2023 and beyond. So right now we are paying $4.3 million in 2022. It's paid, comes of our general fund sources and the EMS levy. Your direction a couple of weeks ago, or I guess just last week, was to reduce the tax collections by that same $4.3 million amount. So that's what the way this is written up right now. And that would come about by doing two things. You reduce the general property tax levy by the $2.6 million we've talked about, and the EMS levy is going to expire at the end of 2022, and we would not renew that. So that's the other 1.7. So the 2.6, the 1.7 makes the 4.3. So that is reducing the taxes on Mill Creek taxpayers in 2023 the same amount they would have they are paying in 2022 and so you would do that uh through a, a resolution uh confirming that plan on the uh next week so this is what it looks like the resolution that's in your packet i wanted to put that up there so you can see how it works because this is your promise that would be out there in terms of how you're going to reduce taxes so it's got those two pieces reducing the general property tax levy by 2.6 and acknowledging that the EMS levy is going to go away and you're not going to renew it. We're looking at those draft agreements. No, no action being taken tonight. We wanted to have the public have an opportunity to, to ask questions uh, either tonight or during the next week. We'll do the same thing again next week, February 8th, but this time we're going to ask you to consider taking action on those resolutions. So the first one will be approving the RFA plan. The second one will be approving the pre-annexation agreement in the backup interim service agreement, whether we annex or not, we need, that's how we make sure we've got fire services because we're required to provide that. And the third one will be establishing that plan for reducing the property tax. We'll also at the February 8th meeting, we'll take that next step on moving things towards the ballot. So we'll show you the draft resolution that will place the measure on the ballot. That resolution will talk about the ballot language when it says, you know, do you want to vote for this? or not, and then the explanatory statement is what we as the city can put in there, 200 words of what explaining what the ballot measure is, if you'll be, be working on it, and that will go in the voters pamphlet. And so then after February 8th, when you take those actions next week, it's gonna help our communications people say, okay, no more conditionals, no more what ifs in there. Fe beyond February 8th, you pretty much be on the path of answering the questions the public might have about how this is gonna work. So we'll update the FAQ information 
and post that on our website. This is new. Uh, we were talking before about taking that final annexation vote on February 22nd, because that's right before this has to be, the measure has to be to the county on February 25th. Uh, but we're proposing, if it's acceptable, to have a short meeting, single purpose meeting on February 15th. That allows us to move more quickly on some of these things and quit talking about fire and move on to other business. And it also allows us to have more time before the ballot uh, in terms of communication. So that request is to be considered later on tonight. Um, would you, are you willing to have a special meeting on the 15th that we would talk about solely taking that resolution, voting on that resolution to place the measure on the April 26th, 2020 ballot? And when you do that, you also approve that explanatory statement and ballot title language. So hold that thought. We'll ask that later on again. Go back to the other part of this. So we talked last week, if annexation doesn't pass, what do we do? I presented some, some ideas to you last week. What do we do to make sure we've got funding? Because we have $4.3 million we've been using for this. We need six to $6.3 million for 2023 and 2024. So how would we do that? And we talked about it taking likely, likely several different components. Uh, if we renewed the EMS levy or raising the general tax, general tax levy, those are components we got to worry about getting those on the ballot so that you would have to make a decision after the election if it was not passing May 13th, you'd have to make a decision, discussion and decision, decision to put either an EMS levy or a general property tax levy lid lift on the ballot for August. The deadline is May 13th. If you said, let's put it in the general election in November, it'd be August 2nd. But remember, if something doesn't pass, then we got to turn to option D that we didn't talk about was taking money out of our pockets somewhere because we're going to be short the difference between six million and four point three million dollars. About one one point. Um, now it's not working for me. Options A, B, and C, and the general consensus after we talked about it was towards C, but that's still a decision that you you get to make don't have to make that decision, but we presented these options and we kind of called them two taxes and two votes. That would be sharing uh, the load of finding that money, that million dollars in 2023 uh, between an EMS levy that would be voted by the people and a general property tax le levy lift that would also be voted by the people. Option B was one tax, one vote. You can't do it all through an EMS levy. It's just too much money. So you'd say, let's do it with the general property tax levy lift lift and you'd have to go out there and ask voters for 73 cents per, per thousand, but one vote. And option C was two taxes and one vote. You do have the opportunity to, to impose a utility tax without going to the voters. And so that would be a way to not have to have two votes, contingent on two votes. So you'd have an EMS levy, you go out there, that would, might be easier to pass that people are used to EMS levies and then turn to a utility tax on all of the people in town to uh, pull in that extra million dollars that, that were short. Um, so that'd be by council action. And I just did a rough back of the envelope calculation. We're talking about four and a half to 6% tax on $225 per month, assuming about the number of households we have. So that's a really rough thing. That's probably people's cable bills and cell bills together. Mayor and close this part of the presentation. I think open up for the public if they'd like to ask questions or make statements. And then kind of like a public hearing, we'll close that back down again. It's not a public hearing, but that's a way for them to ask us questions and um, not respond in a conversational format, but we can sure respond to those things if anything's brought up. So Mr. Mayor, you're, you're up. Thank you, Director Todd. So this is our bonus round of audience communication tonight. Could we unshare the screen so I can see most of the participants? So this is the public's opportunity. If you have any comments on the annexation and the proposed agreements, or if you have any questions that you want to pose for staff that they can follow up on after we close the bonus round of audience communication. So with that, anyone would like to ask a question, make a comment on the proposed annexation and set of agreements? Barb? There. Um, first one I want to ask, besides the ones I asked last night, um, if you had to go, let's hope we don't, but if we had to go to one of the options because the annexation did, annexation did not pass and you went with option C, 
would the utility tax be a permanent thing or can it be a temporary thing? Mike, the question um, that came up last night is on the transport fees. Mm. Um, the cost of those, how do they vary from what they are currently with Fire District 7? Um, and would th those, are, I think the other question was, we assumed, but we weren't sure if those apply annexation or not. If it's under contract or under annexation, there's transport fees. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can speak to that. Okay, so that Thank was you. the yeah. other question. I think did I cover all the questions that were discussed last night, Barb? It was about the fire marshal. Oh, and yeah, clarification on the fire marshal services. We we just want to make sure everyone is clear what what's the difference between what the fire marshal does and the inspection services. Okay, I can speak to that too. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else like to comment to the council or ask a question? Mr. Nelson, state your name and address for the record and then go ahead. Sorry. About I'll get back to you, Barb. Will Nelson, 14925 29th Drive, Southeast Mill Creek. Question I have is, is there an understanding or agreement in writing as to the transfer of the uh, fire station and what is to remain, not remain, et cetera? Okay. Barb, uh, you had another question or comment? I had asked about the utility tax. Is it a permanent thing if we have to go that route? Yeah, Is staff's yeah, going to get that. back. Then Mike will okay. get back after we've gone through and closed okay. the additional public comment. Okay. I got four things so far. Anyone else? I'm not seeing any other. I think I have everyone on my screen and I am not seeing any hands. Oh, well, one more question from Barb or comment. Um, I was wondering what the annual contract payment entails. What is that? That the city shall pay a sum annually. What is that? Which agreement are you referring uh, to? This is under, um, it was on page 73 of the printout and it was 5.1 annual contract payment. Yeah, that's the interlocal agreement. Can okay. we? Okay. Any other questions or comments from the public? Okay. With that, I will close the bonus round of audience communication and turn it back over. Are we at the point, Mike, where uh, council questions, and then you'll yeah. make a take a stab at also answering the questions that were raised? Exactly. Yeah. Certainly. Whichever order you'd like to do. Well, let's uh, add to the list of questions and see if the council has anything they want to add. Not seen any from that end. Anyone? John, Vince? I think we got an answer last week. Okay. Stephanie, did you have any additional questions? No, thank you, Mayor. I'm good. I feel like they've answered all my questions so far. I'm sorry? You can make a comment. Oh, just have a comment only because. Yeah, we, you guys are going to get a chance to discuss after we kind of answer the questions. That's what I thought. Yeah. So let me wait till after the questions are answered. I'll bring my comment up. Okay. I'm just trying to get in. Was that everybody? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to take a shot. So I think we're kind of close off on questions. Yes. It's a small enough group. This is fairly workable. So let me see if I can take these in order. If I forgot something or misspoke or missed something, we've got Karen Reed is on the phone on the line there and Grant is on the line. So they're going to back me up if I get too far Welcome, Council Member. Appreciate you hurrying between assignments. Uh, first one is the utility tax. Was it permanent or not? Was the question from Barb Heidel. So you have the opportunity to well, change the utility tax anytime you want to, down. basically. You would impose it, and then you could say two mm -hmm. years later, we don't need that anymore, or you could change it up or change it down. It is something that Council has a lot of liberty with. We haven't had a, a utility tax per se in Mill Creeks. We're not used to it, but that is a fairly common thing. Usually councils are raising them because it's not enough revenue. But I could picture in this case, what we propose under option C would be impose those taxes. And as soon as annexation happens, that would be your promise is that I'm going to, we're going to take those back off again. And again, you'd go through the same discussion with the, with the public is we're going to take them clear off, or we're going to take them off and keep 50 cents. or we're going to take them off and keep a dollar, you know, whatever it would be. You'd have that same probably that commitment you'd want to make to the public if annexed, we'd take, take that away. But that was our safety net approach as a way to uh, find that money between the EMS and um, the total amount we need. 
it looks like that kind of answer that question. She may come back. Let's try some other ones first, Barb, and then we'll come back to you if, if necessary. The next one was transport fees. So what happens now is if the fire department comes and picks you up with their medic unit and takes you to the hospital, typically your insurance is going to cover that or your Medicare or your Medicaid is going to cover that. When that payment happens from the insurance company, that money goes to the fire district. They've provided the service. They collect that money. They keep that money. Many years ago, it was different. We used to get it as part of an earlier contract, but for this last contract, at least, it has been money they've collected. So it's up to them to bill, to try to bill your insurance. If it doesn't work, they give up at some point. So those transport fees won't change. Where I may have confused people was we talked about a different option of what um, Arlington chose to do a number of years ago, a couple of years ago. They were short on paying for their own fire department. And so the way they solved that problem was they imposed a fee, an ambulance service fee, and I think it was $12 per month per household. They talked, they did a full rate study, or they talked about doing a big rate study, charging more for apartments and less for single family homes and businesses. For simplicity, they just made it $12 per taxpayer, I think is what it was. And they said that they knew it wasn't fair. Everybody hated it. But Arlington was in the position where they do their own billing for utilities. So they took their sewer and water bill and just tacked on this $12 councilmanically approved $12 ambulance service fee. And I think at the time they said, this is temporary until we can do something else, but everybody's hated it for a couple of years. So when they annexed into North County Fire a couple of years, I just made this about a year, year and a half ago, they took that off. So that is, I, I mentioned that as a possible approach. It would be very difficult for us to impose that. We do not bill utilities. We used to bill for surface water and we build once a year. We got rid of that. We bill that's now on your property tax statement. So we're not equipped to issue bills and collect, et cetera. So that'd be difficult. So I took that off the options when I gave A, B, and Z last week. I just said, it just didn't make sense. But I was just giving you the, the idea of you can get fairly creative uh, and that's not a tax, it's a fee, but that was a way that Arlington solved that problem. And you could see $12 per month per household was a significant amount of money, just like the utility tax would be a significant amount of money. Um, so I hope that answers the transfer fees. So fire marshal, so what the fire marshal does, it's kind of in charge of the whole thing, checks to make sure that we comply, anything that's built in the city main, falls along with the international building codes with respect to fire stuff. So when you got a new development going on, we send it to the fire marshal. He looks at the plans, just like we look for water and sewer and building codes and all those other things. The fire marshal has a responsibility looking at those plans for compliance with the fire codes. So they are the one that enforce those fire codes for us. We collect fees from the developer for those plan called plan review. So we get money for that. We kept that money. And in the past, that was just part of our arrangement with Surfer. That was part of our contract for their $4.3 million with South County Fire, because they've got some unincorporated area, some cities, the way they've leveled the playing field is to say, and I should say the unincorporated area has a county fire marshal that does that. So cities either have their own fire marshal or contract for that from you know, our, our old case was Surfer, new case will be, be South County Fire. So that fire marshal service will be something we still collect a fee for. And as the mayor pointed out last week, we could review those fees and see if they're adequate. And then we will turn around and pay somebody who probably has South County Fire on their shoulder patch to do that for us. The fire inspector is on an annual basis. I think it's annual basis. They walk into restaurants and businesses and make sure your smoke detector is working. Is your vent hood working properly? Have you cleaned out your grease traps? Are you doing the right thing? And for instance, during COVID, it was that fire inspection function that was going around and saying, this tent has got a gas heater and it's flammable and you ought to do something about that. So they worked with us. So they work closely with us, but we really depend on those inspectors to go out there and look with respect to fire danger. So those two things sound similar and they are similar, but they're a little bit different. The fire marshal is more a guy working in the office, looking at drawings, fire inspector, somebody out walking around, checking smoke detectors and, and sprinklers, systems like that. So is the fire marshal looking at subdivisions, building plans, remodel plans, things like that? Yeah, so every tenant improvement plan that comes through, like a, it, it, some of the new 
new plans at the farm. So the farm itself had a review by the farm marshal when it was built. And now when Amazon Go comes in, they got to submit their plans for development review at a lower level. And they're going to check to make sure things are going on that are appropriate. But well said, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that was number three I had from Barb's. Um, Will talked about the transfer of 76. So yes, it's in the agreement. Um, it is in the pre-annexation agreement, I believe, but I'm gonna have to turn this over to Grant to say exactly how it works. But basically under, the, under annexation, we are gonna take the station and give it to South County Fire. And that kind of got people like rankled. Why are we giving it to them? Well, that's part of joining the RFAs. You bring all your equipment, your people, your equipment and your buildings. In our case, we only have the building, but that's part of the, the, the fair for being part of the organization. So we are bringing our building. What's a little bit unique is if they ever decide that station 76 is in the wrong location and they wanna abandon that and go somewhere else, uh, Grant and the rest of the staff worked on a, a, a revisionary right so that we can say, okay, if it's not gonna be a fire station anymore, you gotta give it back to us and give us full benefit for the money we've paid for it. So it's a fair way for us to get a, an inflation appreciated price back for that property if we want to have in the future. So picture 15 years from now, they decide to build a bigger, better station somewhere else, no longer station 76, they don't need it. They give us the opportunity to get that back and then we could turn it into something else. And Grant, fix that because I probably missed some points. I think you've got, you've got pretty much got it. Um, the price of our acquisition of the balance of the interest in the fire station was negotiated and is part of the surfer contract now. So that's already in place in a lot of the provisions related to the purchase, uh, the price and the term, which we can purchase it over 20 years for an annual payment. So that's all in the surfer agreement. And uh, Director Todd was uh, correct in that uh, the other terms in terms of the quick claim deed, once we acquire the station, and we have to acquire the station um, in any case, because we're switching providers. So we are going to be acquiring the station. Um, and then we have the right of reversion uh, in the event that the uh, South County Fire uh, chooses to not operate it as a continuing operating it as a, a fire station. So that right is there. The city's interest is protected uh, so that uh, the purchase price uh, that it paid for the station is adjusted annually for inflation. So there's uh, an ability to get value if that eventuality comes to pass while South County Fire uh, is the service provider. And on the other side, if Will's other question, Mr. Nelson's other question was, well, what happens in the short-term service agreement? We're basically gonna be a, the landlord and lease it to them at a very attractive rate. Basically, they are going to maintain it, all the maintenance and operations. We won't have to worry about anything, just like we don't worry about the station today, but it will still be our station until we go to annexation. The fifth one that I think we heard was the annual contract payment. So under these interim service contract, we will need to pay that $6 million-ish in 2023 or $6.3 million-ish in 2024. And so that clause that uh, Ms. Heidel found was about our agreement to pay them monthly or quarterly. I think we've talked about quarterly, but I'm not sure what it says in the agreement in terms of the logistics, we need to pay them that amount of money because we'll still be in the fire middleman business. We'll still be collecting taxes through general fund levy, EMS levy, utility taxes, whatever council elects to do. You'll have to pay them 6 million bucks in some approach. And I think that's what that clause was about. But Grant, check me on that one too. It's 5.1 you said on page 70 it's something. 5.9, it's in the exhibits. Yeah. My page numbers are not limit, not listed, but I think that's what that was about. Resolution. On the wrong agreement. It's a big pile of paper, I apologize. I believe it's exhibit B. Yeah, since I'm hard copy paper, you guys will have links you can find. It. So annual contract payment transfer transport fees I'm getting the sense that this is not actually the question, not the right part of the agreement from watching Ms. Heidel. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, with your permission, maybe you want to let her go back to tell us which page she's on. 
I think she said page 73 of the. Yeah, I, I don't oh. have page numbers. I apologize. Of the packet? Yeah, my, I got a printed packet. I apologize. I don't have. Barb, what's the section number you're referring to? 5.1 under assets, I guess. It's page four. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, 5.1. That's correct. Yeah. 5.1. Annual contract payment, the city shall pay RFA a sum referred to as a contract payment. That one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the annual contract payment is found on page 81. And it's exhibit A and it is for 2023, $5,978,082. And in 2024, it is $6,152,163. some other question on that contract payment or are we in the wrong place i see your hand still up no she just had surgery oh keeping the blood from running out that's good I have questions I heard. Okay. Were there other questions from Council Mark? Did you have anything to questions to ask before we get the discussion? Do you have another question, John? John, go ahead then, Mark. Yep, uh, Mike, actually a question came up from one of your answers. So uh, I didn't have a question, but now I do. So, um, it was, it's regarding, regarding the uh, fire station itself. Um, maybe you could help me with this. I, I thought I had it and now I'm a little confused again. I understand, I totally understand that we are going to purchase under this agreement in the annexation, we would purchase the station from Surfer for our agreement. We are going to gift the station to South County Fire, understand, okay. In the event that South County does not wanna use this as a fire station anymore, are they going to, they're not going to gift it back to us, are they going to sell it back to us and at what price? Grant, help me with that one. That's the answer is yes, they're going to sell it to us, uh, back to us at uh, fair market value at the time of the sale, but we get a credit for the amount that we per that we purchased it for, which would be something over $1.8 million annually adjusted for inflation. So we are not paying, we, we get a credit against the uh, what we had paid. to make it because yeah, it's a little, yeah. a, little, a little bit weird so in the surfer contract 1.16 is what we would pay for our what we still owe them on that station our equity right now is like six or seven eight hundred thousand dollars those two numbers together is about the 1.8 or 1.9 that grant just referred to so we have about that much equity after we buy the rest of it it'll be free and clear ours will it'll be about 1.8 20 years from now, that property might be assessed at $5 million. Right. They won't just give us the 1.8 credit against that 5 million. They got to take the 1.8 and inflate it by the factor we've put in there. So we didn't want them to get all the benefits of inflation on holding that piece of property for 20 years and then sell it back to us at fair market value that's now inflated. So we said, let's share in that and give us an inflated value. So our 1.8 might raise up to 3.5. They get appreciation, we get inflation. We get in, oh, okay, we get in. The property, get, the property appreciates. We get inflation, the, not appreciation. Well, so right. in other words, if the property, if, if we own 50% and they in turn want to give it back to us in five years, they won't give us credit for 50% of the value of the property at that time. They give us credit for what we spent at an inflationary rate of 4.5% or whatever inflation is running at. Yes. seven or so, 10 or 15 yeah and if we, and yeah. if if the property is you know, and if the the uh, in, uh the um the the appreciation of property is running at 20 percent we're only going to get the 4.5 percent but conversely the property is running at a rate of two percent inflation <laughs> running at 4.5 we're going to be ahead but it's based on inflation not an appreciation yeah that's the, that's well, a good terminology hmm or mayor stumbled on it. Maybe I said that wrong then. No, I think you said it right. But I mean, the amount we paid doesn't appreciate. It's that it's going to be adjusted by the amount of inflation. But 
the property value, the value of the property that's credited against will appreciate, well, it may appreciate over time. Yeah. The other thing you can figure about is that, you know, one of the things have been talked about a long time about Station 76, currently it doesn't have separate men's and women's facilities. And so Surfer used to talk about a capital project to do that. It never got done. South County Fire might choose to do that. So they will, they might put half a million bucks into it. Uh, some benefit, they need to get some benefit out of that money right. they put into it. So that's why it might be $5 million because they've put in marble floors and added a third story or something or other. So that's, we're just going to get back what we put into it aided by the, the effect over time. Oh, that clarifies. It. Thank you. Yeah. It's a little bit confusing, but I think it's, it was the astute of our city attorney to think about that. And we've talked about how to make that fair. And we decided, granted, we decided like a CPIW for the Seattle area. What, what did we decide? Seattle Bellevue Everett. Yes. Uh, and it's adjusted annually. It, it was a, it was a negotiation. I think that's the best way to say it. Uh, we didn't have this, and it wasn't in the agreement to start with. We got the reversion in, then we had to value it. Um, originally, the South County Fire wanted us to purchase the fire trucks as well, which we are not having to do. Uh, they're bringing them with them with uh, with South County Fire's annexation. So uh, it was a negotiation. Yeah, Councilmember Bond had a question. It, just reiterate the uh, we have pretty favorable terms on how we go about paying off Fire District Five as well, right? You can take a long surfer. Yeah, you said five. That's a new number. <laughs> you meant seven. Yeah, uh, seven. Sorry, yes, five yeah. is Sultan. Yeah, there you go. You're, you're revealing your other That's Sultan other on life. your mind. Sorry, so we caught you there. Yes, Fire District Seven. So our terms again are pretty favorable. Yeah, so it is set at one point one six million dollars or equal payments, no interest for 20 years. And those equal payments are about $60,000. So if so we that, took advantage of that long window of time, the time value of money, it, it does offer us a little bit of offset some of that potential inflation side of things. Exactly, yeah, our payment's not going up over time. We're just gonna say 60,000 bucks and that's easy for us to budget and good deal because we, get, we got a 0% loan basically. Thanks. Sorry. Go ahead, Councilmember Duque. It doesn't seem to be turning on, so I think it, that's a whole other thing. But thank you. Um, I same thing as Councilmember Steckler. I um I had questions based off of what you shared. Okay. Um, the first is the question about the non-voting seat. Um, who would, since it's non-voting, would we then appoint someone to be on it, or would we still want an election for not? Or we don't know, and that needs to be determined. Your your smile has. I, I don't know. Karen or Grant? One of oh, you okay. Guys jump in. Other. I can't remember how that. Grant can correct me. I believe it's it has to be an elected official from the city of Mill Creek. So the council will choose amongst yourselves the person to go oh. and and sit at their meetings. Okay, that, does that, that make sense? That, that is not. correct. Well, it's kind of like a fire board, but instead of three, there's one, and it's not voting. I yeah. suppose that people go sit in the audience. There's nothing that prevents you from doing that. You couldn't have more than a quorum there mm -hmm. for reasons of that. But it really is one person gets to sit at the table and say, hey, don't forget about Mill Creek. Right. Until that redistricting happens. And then we would have an election. They would have an election specifically for that position. Yeah. And that's going to go out to citizens we know. Yes. might put this sign in the yard that says, I'd like to be a fire commissioner for South County Fire. Yeah, perfect. Um, then in terms of the um the fire station you mentioned if they decide to not keep it um as a fire station um and this is a weird technicality what happens if they no, are no longer providing us service but they're still using that station um for the unincorporated i don't i don't know but what happens if it's still being used as a fire station because that's what it says in our contract but they're not servicing Milk Creek anymore. Is that even been thought about? Is that too weird? Yeah, it's pretty weird. So here, so we are gonna once our citizens annex into that district, yeah. they would have to unannex or de-annex mm -hmm. out of it. And I don't know if that's I don't know how that works. So Grant, you get to field that one. And it may be a question for you know to think about for next week. I'm just wondering if there's something contentious between the residents that they no longer, they don't feel like they're being supportive. And so then they've created some type of petition that wants to de-annex and they're like, one of the things they're still holding on to is the, the station. station. We did not address that contingency um, 
in our negotiations and it's not included in the agreement council member okay. um, it would be as as director todd was mentioning it would be complicated because there would have to be some sort of de-annexation vote um, which would be um, I, I haven't i'm not aware of there having been one with these regional fire authorities karen might want to uh, to uh, to join in on this one but i guess it's at least theoretically possible I would agree. I'm not, I'm not aware of that ever happening. And I think if it did happen, I would be surprised if the fire district wanted to keep a facility in town where they would just been told, please leave. So, um, and operationally, they may have better places to put their staff at that point. But it's a good question. Um, kind of two, one is for Mill Creek Festival, for those types of events, in terms of the fire inspection and fire marshal, assuming based off of your description, that is a fire inspection mm -hmm. role, based off how you explained it to me. Thank you very much. Um, and then I know for the fire marshal, you said that we get the money back in terms of that. But fire inspection, um, the checking, how does that payment we, we process don't work? charge for fire inspections. So we, I think the mayor pointed out, I think that's within your purview. If you want to change your fee schedule for any kind, any right. number of things, I think you could do that. I think it's probably needs to be somewhat commensurate. I'm not exactly sure what the rules are there, but I think you could say fire inspections are $25 a year or for any on business. the size of your structure is 25 for a simple one and 3000 for expense for a big mm -hmm. warehouse. Okay. Surfer doesn't charge when they send their inspector out to our businesses to inspect, do they? Right. No. So right now our businesses don't pay a fire inspection fee. That's again, part of this all encompassing contract we've had for many, many years. Uh, and I don't really know if other cities charge for those or not. I apologize. Do, do you happen to know Karen or, or Grant, do other cities charge for fire inspections? I'm actually not sure if they do. Um, I know they, they charge for the permit fees for sure. Um, I, I could I could find out and and get back to you on that. They do in Sultan, so a, if a business owner in Sultan gets an inspection, he has to pay X dollars for that inspection. Councilmember Bond, who works in Sultan now, says the city of Sultan charges that business owner for the inspection and then turns around and pays much, a big part of that fee back to the fire inspector for doing the work, but they get a little handling fee in the process. Okay, like 15 admin and 90 the fire, mar the fire marshal, who's really a fire inspection in that case. Yeah, fire marshal, fire marshal and fire inspection often gets smashed together, but it's kind of two different functions. So if the annexation is approved and we need to look at this, this would be something we'd look at with the budget later in the year and how we want to fund it? Exactly. Yeah. That's a really good question, though. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, now, now I don't have a question. Now I have that comment I had from the beginning. And it's kind of a, uh, I just I asked the question about the uh, building just because I want to make sure I understood it. When I was listening to your presentation as we prepare for next week and we talk about annexation, every time, and it hasn't been a lot, but every time somebody, citizens come to me about this fire annexation thing, John, what is this? Their biggest concern every time has always been they bring up the fire station. And so when we talk about the annexation, I think it's important to mention um, two things, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but with this annexation, we are going to be maintaining the Mill Creek Fire Station, right where it is. And I think people need to know that. Okay. When they hear about this annexation, one of the first things they need to know is our fire station is not going away. It's still going to be there. It's the same building, and they're going to take it over, provide the equipment and provide the people. So that's not going to go away. And one of the things, and I don't know if I'm overstepping my bounds on this, but way back when you were first walking us through all of this, there were some maps, I don't know if Karen presented them or somebody did, where you showed some overlays of South County versus Surfer and mm -hmm. where the other fire stations were. And, and in some cases, I remember those maps and noticing that some of the South County fire stations are actually closer to Mill Creek residents than this Mill Creek fire station. And in, in essence, we're getting some really good um, enhanced protection and fire stations. So when you talk about 
all annexation, what's going to happen to our fire station. And in essence, we're going to have probably the opportunity for better coverage and better fire stations. I don't know if I'm overstepping my bounds and saying that, but uh, I think it's important to let people know that this annexation is not going to take away from our fire station, take away from you know what we've had, and in some cases could could enhance it. And I don't know if we can say that, but I, I didn't, you know, when it, you did a great job in your presentation right here. What happens if we don't get the annexation? You know, it was really clear. I think we could be even more clear on the on the annexation part right up front because it's like my greatest concern as a citizen, if I weren't on this council and wondering what's going to happen to my fire department, what's going to my fire station. And I think to some people in Mill Creek, that Silver Lake fire station is a lot closer and a lot nicer as a, a part of this uh, program. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I think that that's one of the, I want to make sure we put that on our website. I know we've got a page and we're going to add some more information. We didn't want to get ahead of the council's discussion or decisions, but we want to add some things like that map. But for me, that map too, you're talking about the one that shows the fire. The, what, what is their district? Is already. Yeah. What is their district? Who's it? What does it cover? Where does Mill Creek fit into that? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Councilmember Bond. Thank you. It, it's sort of a good point, but it's not. I, I humbly suggest it's not entirely accurate. This isn't like I'm buying from Safeway and now I'm going to buy from Fred Meyer, but I just want to know I'm getting the same good customer service. It's as if Safeway and Fred Meyer really sort of work together and whoever can meet your needs best at the time meets it. So they have mutual aid and fire doesn't. So, so there you essentially there is going to be no reduction in service. It's going to be the same good service. And it may be the same people that they've seen. The, the folks don't necessarily look out in the truck and goes out of district one or out of district seven. Um, but with mutual aid, it just whoever's closest goes. So the good news is it is going to be the same good service. And even fire commissioner Faye said, regardless of what way the city goes, the citizens will be well served and it, it won't be a reduction in service. And that's the drum I definitely think we need to be. That's the one I want to make sure we drum. Yes, because that's the fear. That's is the there going to be that's some change or am I not going to see my guys? Is it not going to be? You're actually going to see them same folks at the same uh, consistency. It's just a matter of who is collecting the money. There's a, it's a really small change. It's weird. But the good news is the service will be just as good as it's always been by a bunch of very dedicated fire professionals. Good points. So we're listening to that and Karen is helping us with, and I see AJ's on the phone too here. We're listening to this in terms of the communications that we put out there because those messages are important. What you're hearing from the community about their concerns are certainly what we want to talk about. We think we've covered the bases, but it, it's, it's pretty complicated. You guys have seen this. This is complicated. It's not easy to keep it in our brains from week to week and our voters can be faced with making a decision on based on very little information. Other comments? Need for us. <clears throat> I think you're soliciting whether or not anyone had any requests for tweaks or changes to the resolutions that were presented tonight that we'll be bringing back for presumably to act on next week on the 8th any questions yeah, so, that's the, so resolution to pass the rfa plan which we really can't change that's already in right. place and we don't want to change that rfa plan they've amended for us it's the pre-annexation agreement and short-term agreement that handle whatever happens because we got to provide fire and it is your resolution to promise the voters that you're going to uh pull in less taxes. So that one right there, that's the one that you have yet to see, but that embodies what you talked about with your option. That we believe that was the option uh, three. But this, that would be the subsequent action we take after the eighth, correct? That, this, would be, this would be on the eighth. Oh, this is the eighth. Okay. So the, the decision after that is the decision to put it on the ballot. Actually put on the ballot. Okay. Yeah. Cause we want to make sure all these things are in place before you go put on the ballot. We didn't want to confuse that, um, those two steps. So this is how it will look to voters who say, geez, how do I know those guys are going to give me my, my, my money back? This is kind of your promise that what you're going to do in the 2023 property tax oh, meeting in November, you're going to say, oh, that's right. We said we would not collect 2.6. So Laura will take 2.6 off of the 6.6 .6 we collected and collect four instead or something like that. And we'll let that EMS levy expire. It'll just go away. We don't have to, have to uh, annul it because it's just going to go away. Then I think we're set up for February 8th for the votes we've got to take. I think okay? <clears throat> I think we are. May um, Stephanie, did you have anything? I, okay. 
So then the other, other question here is that the 15th, well, as I said, it would really be advantageous if we could do this and get on with other things that have to happen, like the purchase of the station. We don't want to do that until you guys have put this on the ballot, but we do need, I mean, we're going to go that direction, but we do need to start purchasing a station because we have to have it by August 1st. So is there an objection for having a meeting? It would be a single purpose, special purpose meeting. One thing shouldn't take too long. Uh, unless you want to talk about a long time, but that would also give you an opportunity to make statements or, or questions about the, the, the decision you face. Yeah, and remember, we heard from Ms. Loomis a couple of weeks ago that in a perfect world, she would have had this information campaign in her lap a year ago. And so even if we can provide, if people's schedules allow, one week with the election in April, uh, that would give her an additional week of time that she could use. So our people's schedules, I, I didn't anticipate it wouldn't take us more than a half hour. Yeah, I think if you preferred to do it by Zoom, it, this is one that probably would work. We, I was going to ask, it, could we make it a virtual meeting? Yeah, sure. I don't think there's any reason you can't, isn't there? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great if we can make it a virtual meeting. Does that work? Stephanie, is that, I see your head shaking. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's very important that we go ahead and tackle this and, and I'm perfectly fine with the virtual meeting. Okay, so it would be a special meeting held virtually for this topic just to take the action uh, that next step after we take the steps on the 8th to take that last and final step to formally send it to the voters on the 15th. Yeah, and the, and the point number two there, you're going to see that explanatory statement language we're working on that right at 200 words, we're trying to figure out how to get every last word working for us and that ballot title. So we're working on those things. You'll see those drafts next week, have a chance to approve those. So it won't be a surprise on the 15th. We just weren't ready for tonight and didn't want to confuse you with those words yet. Mayor, just, just point of order. Is, is there anything um, procedurally we need to do if we're going to do a complete virtual meeting? I'll leave that to the city attorney. And uh, I mean, we had virtual meetings before before uh, before we came back to the hybrid format so i don't we will check but i don't think there's anything that us. thanks just curious we can notice it for that part yeah. in that manner then the last measure here i'm going to turn over to the mayor to pitch this but basically we have an opportunity we have a have an obligation to seek people who want to make pro or con statements that appear in the member of the voters pamphlet has an explanatory statement has a pros and cons and rebuttals. We have to give those dates to the county by February 25th. So you have to make that decision by the 22nd to have those names in by the 25th. So we're trying to set ourselves up by having this call go out tonight for people. So Mr. Mayor. Yeah, and this is a function we heard about this before that we cannot advocate. We can provide information on our decisions and we can individually indicate why we individually supported whatever decision we voted for. Um, but it's up to these committees, the pro and con committees to advocate for or against the decision we are looking like we're gonna make in a couple of weeks. And so the voter pamphlet is prepared by the county, I believe, we just provide the content for it. They put it together and publish it and send it out with the ballots. Um, and so we will call for volunteers who want to serve on the pro committee, as well as volunteers that want to serve on the con committee. I believe uh, Scott and Jody will duly notice it and get it publicized that we're soliciting volunteers. Uh, we're, on the screen, we have an email address, but I'm not sure if that'll be the only format they'll take it. Um, but we'll call for a deadline on the 16th, and then on the 22nd, we'll get the applicants, uh, whoever submitted their names, and we get to select uh, the up to three each, is that correct? Yes, up to three each. Three pro and three con. So they are the, those are the people that advocate publicly for it. We, we provide information. Yeah, and remember that these, these are the names that appear in the voters pamphlet. They were the pro committee or the con committee. That doesn't mean other people can't help out with what they want right. to do. So their committee could be bigger, but this is kind of the three chair people that need to be named. And if it's only one person, that's fine. If it's zero, the count, we tell the county we got zero and they have the opportunity to go out and solicit somebody themselves. I don't know how, quite how they do that, but that's the point is the voters need to have a chance to have pro and con statements in, in the ballot to look at. Okay. And that will go on the website tomorrow morning. Actually, it might be up right now. Right. But he was waiting to hit the button. That's it. I think that we're, we're good for it. Is there, I guess, there are any questions? We don't need to take a decision and we're not.
not intending to take a decision on what you would do if it doesn't pass. I gave you those options, A, B, and C. We've kind of shown C is maybe the better way to go right now. The way you're thinking is we don't have to decide that. If you want to direct staff to look at other options like an ambulance service fee, I'm going to come back and say it's too difficult, but you could give us other ideas. We don't need to do that right now. You would only really need to be doing that if you got to election doesn't pass and you want to figure out how to get off to a ballot for August, you'd have to have that May 13th deadline. So that's when it gets a little crazy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again, Director Todd, Karen, Martin, everyone who's been involved. It's been a lot of work and effort. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, could you, we share the screen with the next document under the study session, the council retreat discussion? So I would like to work us towards having a retreat ideally in March. Uh, the document that was included in the packet is just my notes. It's not the agenda. It's intended to uh, be the basis for a discussion. I think what I'd like to focus on tonight, I'll talk a little bit maybe about people's thoughts on an, uh, substantive topics for the agenda, but um, I think first and foremost, we need to figure out a date and a time. And so, I mean, my thinking was it's hard to get people to commit to weekend times. That's a big ask with everyone's family commitments. And so I'm open and I just don't know what other people's schedules are like. If we we're able to maybe start earlier in the afternoon on a Tuesday and just do it on a either a regular Tuesday meeting and make it a longer meeting or do it in the off week. Uh, the other benefit from my perspective is it might give the opportunity for the staff to at least listen in to some of the discussion that we have on these topics. But um, I, these are, I've thrown it open for discussion. People's thoughts on availability um, in March to move us towards that direction. John? My first preference would be to the weekend. And I'll tell you why is that rather than trying to squeeze it in at the end of the day or pile it in after we've been doing other things, it's, it can be quite draining to do a, a planning session. And so if we could, you know, you know, wake up and have a day where, we can come down, but I respect everyone else's time on that. And I just, if we can, I would, I would prefer that we could do it on a weekend day if possible. Just to be clear, my suggestion was if we did it on a Tuesday, that would be the only agenda topic. We wouldn't be doing it as part of a meeting. It would be a retreat. Right. But I think I saw in your notes, you recommend to start like maybe one o'clock. Oh, I was like just that. throwing out, it could be two, three, four. I mean, just sometime earlier to give us more time, but. Yeah. And I, I like the, the weekend because hopefully we could start in the morning and and be fresh and, and go through the whole, you know, up until like early afternoon or something like that. Like we did before it was, it, it just, people are fresher and, and uh, you know, rested. And uh, it's a, a, just a, if, if possible, it, it offers the optimum, optimum environment. Council member Cavalier. Thanks mayor. I would, um, I would go either way on this. I mean, I, I like what council member Steckler talks about. I like the idea of utilizing a Saturday. It just seems to be more conducive to the process. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any Saturdays or Sundays for the next at least three months. So I mean, a, a, a fourth Tuesday, I could probably uh, take another day off or, or swap it out or something like that um, for that sort of time frame. Um, it gets a little difficult on the weekends given my upcoming schedule. So I, I would just throw that out there. Mayor Pro Tem. Um, Mayor, I would actually be interested to know um, maybe from Martin, um, what the staff's perspective is on what is easier for them. Um, do they prefer to be during the week or is it easier for them to be fresh on a weekend? So um, I don't, have a full preference either way because I can I can make either work. It's easier for me to do personally on a Saturday, but I could make a weekday happen if need be. But I'd be curious what um, what makes staff happy because we're wanting them to participate and be there. What makes staff happy is a pretty broad question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, did you have any comments in response to that? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, uh, we appreciate that uh, you will involve uh, leadership in, 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 in that type of discussion. So I haven't really asked the staff yet. So I, it's something I'll, I'll look into and then I'll get back. 
to end of the dais? I think technically I would prefer the weekend because of work schedule during the week um, and, uh, and then childcare needs during, during the week. But um, I obviously want a council member Cavalieri to be part of it. So um, I would, I will, I will work it out um, for the weekday. If it is um, a weekday, then I would prefer if possible to start earlier um, for that exact reason for us just to um, have at least some part of the day is staff is here already. And um, yeah, I, I just, I, I wouldn't want us to start like at four or 5 PM. Um, but also I know people's work schedules, you might not be able to take that day. I can't hear. I prefer Saturday morning. Okay. So but let's... March, we do have a the uh, fifth Tuesday. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we've got five Tuesdays in March. Uh, we have four. Seventh, fourteenth, twenty first, and twenty eighth. No, you're March. not the same calendar. Oh, Tuesdays. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at Mondays. <laughs> you're right. We do have four. So, um, so that creates an opportunity. I supposed to. Do, I've scheduled training the week of the fifteenth, believing that we wouldn't be here. But if that's like the only night everybody can do it, I'll see. You. I'm supposed to be in Chelan. Well, I'm hearing a preference for Saturdays. That sounds like that's easiest. So, but we have Cavalieri's conference. And I'm not. I'm not available the twenty sixth. I'm not available that Saturday. Yeah, I signed up for a five k. Nice. And I could, I might be able to do the twelfth. Well, let's depending uh, how depending how early it gets done. I could definitely, I could definitely do the twelfth. Okay. Well, let's let's with a very light pencil look at the twelfth, and we'll uh, take that. Um, from there, and I guess in terms of topics, we don't have to get into that in detail tonight, but I'm interested to know people's thoughts. I kind of laid out in this document what I was thinking when I sat down and kind of thought about what we'd want to cover. Um, but we we can discuss it tonight or we can I can put it back on the agenda and we can noodle on it for another week and we can have a more substantive discussion and so that uh, Mayor Pro Tem and I can then coordinate with Martin and staff to put together something. I guess the only other question I'd ask, what are your thoughts on a facilitator? Um, I personally like it. I don't know if you remember um, Andrew Ballard. He helped us out with something uh, with Rebecca a number of years ago. He lives in Sunrise next to Mill Creek Elementary. He's been uh, facilitated a number of retreats I've been part of, and he's relatively cost effective. So he's one option. I think he quoted me depending on whether it's a half day or full day uh, between 1500 and 2500. So it's you know, in the grand scheme of things, I think it's relatively inexpensive and I think it's helpful. It takes some of the burden off of staff to prepare us for the retreat. So um, I'd be happy to inquire on his availability if you guys are open to that. Okay. Do you wanna get into topics tonight or do you wanna save that for next week? Oh, I see your lights on, did I miss you? Okay, Council Member Duque. Agree with the facilitator. I think that's helpful. Um, uh, any any type of work things, I always recommend that to my clients. So um, yes to that. And I was just wondering, could we email you potential ideas as well? I didn't know sure. if that wasn't um, uh, as an additional step before next Tuesday. So you and because um, when is your mayor's meeting? Or you know, we meet meeting? on Thursday. So whatever you send in, if you want to send me something, we can make sure I'll we'll just do a little expanded set of information like I had and just have every, put it to everyone for discussion next mm -hmm. week. Councilmember Steckler. I have a, or maybe yeah, I'm wondering if you want to do it now or maybe next week or offline. But um, you know, like is, is your mic on? Sorry about that. I liked your suggestions on topics. I thought that a lot of them were great. Um, one thing I was going to suggest the last time we did it, we did start with the mission and vision and it was kind of got us a little bit off to a slow start. It was a, um, and so I, I gave it some thought and then, and I was going to suggest that maybe we did something a little bit different this time. Uh, and I was going to suggest that, uh, 
in preparation, I like the fact that we're going to include leadership, city leadership, and uh, the director level, the you know, city leadership level. I like the, the fact that we're asking them along with the council. And I was going to suggest that maybe we uh, we have um, some home, uh, some uh, maybe a, a list of uh, questions that each individual completes in advance, that is uh, compiled in advance, um, that are all the same from each individual, um, just to see where there's a uh, alignment, misalignment about um, you know where where the what the city does well, what the city needs to change, um, what would you do if you were in charge, uh, what are the biggest challenges to us. And I think it would help to get us off to an interesting start as to what the perception is around the city, both in the council level as well as from the leadership level. And then also a review of maybe five, no more than no more than 10 cities, but just five cities uh, of just comparing what, what's going on in some of the other cities around us. Um, how do we compare to them? Um, what are they doing better than us? What are we doing better than them? Uh, maybe take a look at some things like their messaging structure, um, uh, things that we could learn from them that would just get a lot of the creative elements going for a discussion about a retreat and strategizing where we want to go in the future. I think it would it would uh, help to kind of fuel the fire, just those those two areas. That was a suggestion I was going to make. For, for planning purposes, what's everyone's window of focus on a Saturday? Are we thinking nine to 12, a lunch break for 45 minutes and then going till 3.30 or four? Is that too long of a day? That sounds good. Nine, nine, nine to four and we'll figure out how that breaks up and how we fit a meal and snacks in. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. If we have to do earlier for um, Councilmember Cavalieri's day, I'm also willing to start at eight or 8.30, okay. um, but not six. But not six. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we'll take that and start walking with it. We won't start running yet. If you have additional suggestions for topics, uh, send them my way or Stephanie's way, and we'll gather everything and we'll have a little further discussion next week. But I'll reach out to Mr. Ballard and see if he's available, and hopefully he will be, but we will see. Yeah, I like him too. Okay. Um, with my agenda. Where are we at? Okay, so that brings us to uh, reports. I had eight things last night, so I don't have anything other than to thank those who joined us for the, the coffee talk. Uh, my hope is that in the next couple months, we'll get to a regular date and time. Um, hopefully the off week things are kind of in flux with all we're doing right now, but um, we'll get these, uh, continue doing these in the, in the months ahead. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, did you have any report tonight? Um, yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, I do want to start off by thanking everyone who came to the coffee chat last night. It was great talking with everyone and thank the staff. Um, I really appreciate those who stayed and showed up so that we could have that great event. It's always so nice to just have that casual chat time about what's on people's minds so that we can kind of tune in and actually have a more laid back conversation. Um, I also want to report, I called in, um, well, or participated via Zoom to the AWC call um, to talk about the legislative priorities last Friday. And so I just want to point out a couple of things for us to have on our radar. I know they mentioned that they are in the middle of discussing, um, they are working on some police, um, some clarification for the police reform bills that sounds like they are tackling the use of force to make it more clear um, and taking up these things that we were we have discussed ourselves that um, were lacking in the bill that they had originally done. So it sounds like there's a few bills out where they're tackling this. So I want to make sure that um, everyone's aware of that and that our um, I'm assuming that um, Acting Chief White is on top of that and we'll reach out to um, State Senator Lovick or Rep Representative Berg if he has any Thing he wants to add to what they're doing. Um, I also, I know we don't have legislative priorities ourselves for the whole, um, for the whole council. And I think we probably all have various different opinions, but I do want to point out that there are a couple missing middle housing bills that are up for discussion in the legislature. Um, I forgot to write down which one's the Senate bill and which one's the House bill. One's 5670 
and one 1782. So I just encourage each one of you to look into those and reach out to your representatives and let them know how you think about it and how you feel that it would impact the city. So they have your opinion on that. And I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, Cal Councilmember Bond, any report? No report. Councilmember Steckler. No report. Councilmember Cavalieri. Just real quick, Mayor. Just want to um, thank the staff members involved, um, Director Todd, Mr. Yamamoto, all the folks, Laurel Gimzo, all these folks that worked on the fire contract, the fire board, this council up here. I don't think the public understands how many uh, intense man hours grant. Um, I certainly can't fit, uh, forget She's off the screen now, I forgot it. Karen. Karen Reed, uh, it really is a, a big lift that we took on here and it's a lot of work, a lot of manpower and hopefully the public, we, you, know, you know that we get through the end of this coming up here pretty quick, but it was a lot of work, a lot of effort and it's for your benefit. And this council, the staff and this team did its due diligence in getting you the best product at the best price. So I'm hoping we just continue forward and uh, you appreciate the work that went up here with some of these folks. Let them know. Thank you. Councilmember Allison, any report? No report. Councilmember Duque? First, I just want to say happy Lunar New Year to anyone who celebrates. Um, I'm wearing red uh, for the um, for the new year to bring good luck. And my son brought home oranges. So, you know, I hope um, if you have the time to look into um, all about it, it's wonderful. The Mill Creek Library has a great beautiful setup right now um, that is just a lot of fun, a lot of great books picked out. That's my recommendation for all of you. The other thing, um, I've had the pleasure the last couple of weeks to be part of the subcommittee that was put together for the um, city manager, um, you know, th this process. And I really want to thank Council Member Seckler and Mayor Pro Tem uh, Vignal for their work. We had a great meeting to talk about our criteria, what we're looking for. Um, and I just really, I appreciate it. And I just wanted to make sure um, to thank everyone for that. Thank you. Acting City Manager, your reports tonight. Uh, first thing I wanted to bring up is uh, I did get a uh, response back uh, via the um, preference for the uh, retreat uh, from our uh, leadership team and uh, Chief White didn't respond, but uh, we have a majority here that Saturday is the best day for us. Uh, although we would respect the time, uh, we wanna make sure that all council members uh, are present as well. Uh, the two reports uh, from our staff, first is from our finance director, uh, Laurel Brock, and she'll uh, report on, on November 21 financials uh, keeping in mind, we'll be still be working on the year-end financials, which will be coming out uh, sometime soon, as well as uh, for 2022, we'll have a, a structure for reporting for this year as well, whether it be monthly and quarterly, uh, possibly. The second report will be from our chief of police on a lateral police hiring update. All right. So on these reports, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, I do know these were uploaded late because we did have a lot of uh, balls in the air this week. Um, I will say overall, uh, I would say cash balances are looking really healthy. And um, right now we do have ARPA in the general fund in the reporting. So it does make it look like we have a ton of money. I would uh, remind everyone that it's about $3, th uh, $3 million. So that, is a lot more money than we're used to seeing in our cash balance. And then outside of that, we do have just around a million dollars over what we typically see. Um, I would note that all of your expenses right now are still down. We do have a 2% retro um, pay increase for staff that was approved. So that'll be coming out. We have vehicle purchases. We have um, a lot of different items for year end, we have uh, the fire contract payment. So uh, those balances will be coming down, but overall uh, we are looking really good. So if anyone has any questions, I can answer anything now, or you can feel free to call or email me. Thank you. Acting Chief White, I think 
The floor is yours. Chief White. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Council, I saw, apologize for the technical errors. Um, in regards to lateral hiring or lateral candidate hiring, we were able to having oral board last week on the 27th with three candidates, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, we will be taking that, uh, the results of that lateral hiring process to the Civil Service Commission on the 8th of February, or I'm sorry, the 15th of February for a possible certification of that list and moving forward. Um, the two lateral hires that we hired recently are move, progressing through PTO through their police training officer. And we hope that they're successful and moving forward uh, as quickly as possible. And that's about it for lateral hiring, thank you. third opportunity tonight for public comment audience communication would uh, anyone like to address the council tonight okay going once twice not seeing any we are looking good for not having a motion to extend tonight but we do need to recess to executive session to discuss the status of collective bargaining negotiations pursuant to rcw 42.30.140 and to discuss potential litigation pursuant to RCW 42.30.110, subsection one, little i. Uh, Grant or Martin, how much time do we anticipate we need? About 15 minutes, Mayor, and we will be uh, taking action afterwards. Thank you, yes, we will be taking action at the, as the, the items are on the agenda. So it is 7.28, Let's, uh, we'll recess to executive session until 7.45. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that's no big deal. You know what?
everyone back. Okay, the council concluded its executive session at 7.44. We reconvene in regular session. We'll move on to items J and K, and I'll turn it over to our city attorney for presentation of those. Yes, but I just want to make sure that uh, the mayor pro tem made it back oh, into good. the yep. meeting. I made it back, um, Grant, thank you. It wasn't showing me an option at first, but it let me back in. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, so the first item we have is uh, a, a uh, we're seeking council approval of a settlement agreement uh, in the case that was styled uh, Washington State Council of County and City Employees uh, versus the City of Mill Creek. This was uh, a matter that arose out of the city's uh, 2020 reorganization that resulted in uh, the elimination of three uh, positions. The union filed a grievance and then filed an action at, with the Public Employees Relations Commission. Um, following a mediation process, there was additional negotiations and the, uh, the, this settlement was uh, achieved. Uh, in, in short, uh, the, uh, under the agreement, the uh, the city has in the union have agreed to certain language regarding uh, management rights. The, there has been uh, an agreement to add one um, member, uh, one new position and uh, two, of the, um, two of the former union members are receiving a severance payment, uh, which uh, together totals $30,000 and they're providing a full release of all claims. Um, so for that tonight, where we have before you resolution, this would be 2022-624 that we would request uh, council approval. If there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer. This one, if there's a motion, and then before we move on to item K, is there any, any motion? Motion, uh, Mayor, I make a motion to approve resolution 2022-624 as stated by the city attorney. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The resolution is passed seven to zero. Uh, grant item K. Thank you, Mayor. The net last matter we have for you is a is a uh, approval of the collective bargaining agreement between the city and AFSCME. Uh, what we're asking for tonight is for you to rescind um, your prior approval of this uh, agreement um, because what was found were some what we call Scrivener's errors uh, in the uh, in the document when it came over from uh, in from the union and. Uh, those errors have been re uh, reviewed, revised, and uh, the language that uh, the only substantive language relates to uh, a provision that relates to how um, uh, sick leave is calculated to make it uniform, which will make it easier for our staff to, um, to um, maintain and track. So for that reason, we brought before you resolution 2022-625 uh, requesting you to rescind uh, approval of resolution 2022-622 and approval of the, the uh, agreement, the collective bargaining agreement as revised. The attorney? Hearing or seeing none, are there any motions? Move to rescind approval of resolution number 2022-622 and adopt resolution number 2022-625 and approve and adopt the revised collective bargaining agreement between the city and ASME. Second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And that resolution is passed 7-0. And with that, that brings us to the end of our agenda for the evening, 42 minutes ahead of schedule. So with that, enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see everyone next week. We'll be adjourned. Thank you. Night, everybody. Night, everybody.